Hey yo guys, what's up? It's me, Fangbanger. In this video, I'm gonna be bringing you another FIFA 13 career mode. In this career mode, I am the manager of West Ham United. If you didn't get a chance to watch the last videos that I've made for this, or at least the one that came out yesterday, you'll wanna go ahead and do that because we had a rough break yesterday. We had two losses and we had a draw. Unfortunately, after having a lot of victories, this was a morale defeater for my team, but I decided to come in, uh, make a formation change. Instead of doing the 3-5-2, since I didn't think my center backs were strong enough, I decided to do a 4-5-1. I only feel like I need one striker up at the top. I need a lot in the midfield to be able to stop Chelsea. We're in the Capital One Cup, and I'm playing Chelsea. The game started out really well for West Ham. Thought it was going to be a little bit harder. Out of nowhere, though, we've got Andy Carroll banking in one of the sexiest goals I've seen in quite some time. See as he's sitting there just running around, check, checks all mad and angry at itself. And then we get another disgusting tramp goal right here to Jarvis. It was like the heavens had reached down upon West Ham and said, yes, we want you to beat Chelsea. And they decided to try to hold it here. Although, oh my God, I have never seen this even happen on Ultimate Team or head-to-head -head against anybody. And the computer on World Class just bicycle kicked the shit out of me. It was ridiculous. Fernando Torres, take a look at this one more time. What on earth just happened? Butlin had no chance of stopping that. I decided to make some subs. Obviously, I had some people getting tired. Um, I wanted to continue to try to attack against them as well as play, you know, um, as much defense as possible. Hopefully, we'd be able to hold this freaking advantage that we had on them it was two to one so we decided we needed to put in a fresh set of legs um it looks like diame was getting a little bit winded we needed somebody to take his position as well as jarvis who seems to uh not have as much stamina as the rest of my players he is one of my better left mid or left wings and a lot of people ask why did i get to pay if i have jarvis well for some reason in games he gets pretty tired compared to the rest of the players and his energy's gone, so I love subbing in to pay just to have that last little spurt of uh, speed. And as you see here, he gets a shot on goal. I have no idea exactly how he missed that, but it was like a gift from the FIFA gods shined down upon me. I was on the sideline cheering as a manager of West Ham United. I was just cheering with joy, just hoping hopefully uh, my defense will be able to keep the ball here. Do not let them score. That's all you have to do. Keep the ball, clear it, get it out of there. Let's end the game. We are advancing in the Capital One Cup. Holla at your girl. Fangbanger, the manager, 2-1 to one, Chelsea. I have no idea how we can't beat like Southampton, but we can beat Chelsea. And that was like a London rivalry. You know, we needed to get that. They're a big rivalry against West Ham. We hate them and we needed to win. And I think that's what happened is the emotion of the players went into the game and they went in there knowing we can't just continue losing like this. A draw is not good enough. We need to win. We want to look good in this freaking tournament. We want to win this tournament. We still have a chance. It looks like we're going to have to go up against Manchester United in the next part of the tournament, which is kind of a scary match. But we've got this. Don't worry about that. We've got this. Um, Reed still feeling a little homesick and on top of Reed feeling homesick I'm not entirely like scared that he'll leave although I'm going to try to offer him a better contract whenever I believe December comes or whatnot I'm going to try to keep him on the team so I'm going to try to give him a little bit more money see if that makes him happy and see if he'll stick around apparently that's what you're supposed to do with him I would like to keep him because I don't think that Wynn is ready to be a complete starter although I do have Wynn if Reed decides to leave the team I really hope that that doesn't happen something that I'm looking for though is um, I think I had right mid or right wing I use McCartney um, more or more times than none and depending on whatever uh, formation I'm running but he's not really good and he's not done a whole lot for me and I don't have a whole lot that can be in that position that like do me any good whatsoever so I decided to go out and take a look at some other right mids some youth hopefully if not complete youth then maybe some people that um, show potential or have something special I guess is what they say so I go out and I take a look at some of these players for right mid I don't think that I actually have enough in my budget to get one right now um, one of my youth academy people left me and so my uh, my scout went out and he's got like a couple others but they're bad like the highest rating they're going to get or maybe in like the upper 70s. This is a player that I was looking at right here. Dun Obasi I guess is how you say his name. I think he might be a good pickup 
but I'm not entirely sure. I'm going to inquire about a few players. I saw um, that, though, I probably need to have possibly uh, another scout because when I'm thinking of my team in the future and I'm thinking of, like, what I want to do with them, I think that I need a lot of youth and I need them to be able – I don't even know how many I need in that youth academy, but – I'm not getting a whole lot in whatsoever. And whatever my scout's looking at now is not very good. So I think I'm going to buy another scout and I'm going to send him to different countries than England. I don't think we need to completely look in England. As you know, we have Sergio, who is, I believe, an Argentinian who's going to hopefully be 94 rated and hopefully stays in my youth academy. Um, but right now I, I need somebody for the future or a future prospect for right mid, whether I can get somebody on a loan um, or whether I can completely just sign somebody, uh, Jorge Enrique. I thought that would be a great player. But Zaha is somebody who I'm really interested in. And so I'm going to try really hard with Crystal Palace to see if they'll let me have Zaha. Um, some people, like, they say that they're worth a certain amount. And then when I go look for them, they're, like, asking for way more when I inquire about them. They want, like, Zaha, he was, like, maybe $4 million or whatnot. I didn't actually get to see that. But whenever I inquire about him, he's probably going to be like six or so million, which makes it a little hard. I don't have the budget for that right now. So maybe um, with transfer windows or maybe like if it comes time where I can try to get someone in a loan, that will happen. But Crystal Palace tells me that they do not want to even try to work with me to give me Zaha. I guess they just want to keep him. He's a great player, a great prospect. I know that from just playing with him in Ultimate Team. Um, but... Hopefully, I can talk them into it a little bit different. I still want to get that center attacking mid, Adrian. So there's a few people that I want to work with. I know January is going to have a transfer window. So we'll see what can happen then. Anyway, we go into our next match against Wigan Athletic. Um, we are riding on cloud nine. We're at an all-time high. We just beat Chelsea in the Capital One Cup. We'll be advancing to play Manchester United. It's just a big time for West Ham. Um, but we start the game out with a little bit of a situation. As you can see right there, Butlin was able to make the save, although he didn't really have to try too hard to do that. But unfortunately, um, we get the ball taken away from us, and our defense is still lacking. I'm trying to mark guys, and it's really hard. I feel like I'm world class. They run away from you, and they get a chance like this. And he gets a great through ball right here to Casia, who um, gets a tramp goal with Maloney. And at that point, that was a bunch of Maloney. Come on, what is Butlin doing? Just throws himself in front of him instead of actually trying to go for the ball. Thank gosh that Jarvis was able to save him right here. Matthew Jarvis has become one of my star players. I believe he is just pretty much simply amazing. Next to Andy Carroll, who makes a lot of my other goals, he has done a whole lot. Unfortunately, though, he does get a little bit tired. So sometimes I do have to sub him out for Memphis to pay, as I explained earlier. So uh, hopefully maybe we can find a way to work on that if I'm playing him and we go further into uh, the years of our seasons together. Maybe he will get a little bit more stamina. I'm looking not to draw though or have a draw. I want to win. I make some sub ins and I'm running a 4-5-1. I don't really exactly uh, know like what to do with some of the people in some of the positions, but I put it to the best I can. Unfortunately, right after I make those subs though, McCarthy gets a deflection goal off of Butland. Butland should have just grabbed that. He got saved once again though by Andy Carroll who's just a tank if you just stand him in the middle there just wait for him he'll stand in the middle you can do this a nice little through ball uh, get it to him and he'll just spin around and he kicks that goal and half the time he makes it not even half time like 80% of the time he makes it and then right here win I pushed win all the way up the right wing because I knew he had pace he'd be able to get past their defense and he gets a nice cross it didn't it doesn't go in the first time it was deflected to Noble, who was able to just be super clutch in that moment and get a volley shot that scored a goal. I mean, it was just so awesome. Um, you know, that happened to us against Queens Park Rangers, but we were, we were able to come back and do it even quicker with just one minute left. It was an 89th minute goal and then a 90th minute goal. Um, we were super excited about that. I mean, that's like something we needed. And everything is going pretty well for West Ham at this point. Um, I'm really so excited about them. We're going to go and we're going to play uh, Newcastle in the next game. So that's going to be a big matchup for us. But we're back to the top of the table. Um, we're in fifth and everything is going quite well for us. Our players are doing pretty good. Um, some of their form obviously needs to be fixed. It kind of We had some situations with uh, the last three games before this. But we're back on track to winning and hopefully we will keep it up. That is it though for this episode of our career mode. Thanks for watching and until next time, get fang bang nerds.